there's no black or white. Most of things in life, they're really grey in colour. And that's, that's where the drama is. <laughs> I was a real policeman. I was a, a criminal investigation superintendent. And then ever since I was in the force, everybody says, hey, Philip, try to look like a cop, will you? Because you're always so, you always dress fancy, you know, you've got fancy gun holsters and the way you talk and you, and you behave. You don't look like a cop at all, you know. You, you look like a playboy. But I didn't think a cop should be stereotyped. But after I left the police force, I became an actor. And, all the producers and casting directors you just tell me, Philip, we can only give you parts in cops' movies. You look like a cop and nothing else. In 1974, I was running one of the first teams of undercover policemen in, in Hong Kong. And uh, that was very interesting for a young man. I was the chief inspector of CID, criminal investigation. Uh, but then there are also a lot of the darker side of, of what these undercover cops had to go through. Uh, some of that have been, have been revealed in the subsequent movies. A lot of them haven't. For instance, uh, there were instances where female cover, undercover agents almost got raped. And uh, after that, there were no more, no more women police assigned to, to be uh, undercover uh, agents. And then there were also undercover agents who were uh, beaten up very, very seriously by their own colleagues, and they, they wouldn't say a word. There were others who couldn't stand the pain, who couldn't stand the pressure, and had to just reveal their true identity and get us to bail them out and stuff like that. And, and, it was, and there was still a lot of undercover cops going on. So they, they asked me, they said, Philip, would you, would, would you like to do a movie about undercover cops? In fact, they did it subsequently. It's called uh, Bin Yun Yan, The Borderline Men. Well, I turned them down because uh, th back then I was still under the... Uh, uh, under the uh, re restrictions of the secrecy code, and I, I couldn't review or indulge any of these things. Otherwise, it would jeopardize the lives and safety of some of the undercover policemen. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey, 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 Come on over here. Huh? Uncle Hoy. Mm. Beef jerky. In Hong Kong is such a small city. Everybody knows me. Uh, even up 20 years after I've left the police, the policemen are still saluting me and allowing me to drive into their police station car parks and all that. Uh, the breakthrough doesn't come easy. It takes good directors. It takes a really good. It takes a really good script. What would you do? If he really was my friend, I wouldn't hesitate for a moment, whether he was right or wrong. Even if I was still a cop, yes, I'd help him. I've always been a big fan of John Woo's, not when he was in Shaw Brothers, but rather afterwards when he was directing Michael Hoy. Uh, I thought he was a very, very interesting action comedy director. He cares about everybody um, in the movie, not just in the roles they play, but also in how they carry that character uh, and how they interact. I didn't have any opportunity to work with him until Hard Boy. Foxy. Hey, Greg. Call my girlfriend for me. Have her meet me at the hospital. Right. Thank you. John would be there with a bird's eye view of everything that's going on, and he would come to me and whisper and say, Philip, you know, uh, your lips, don't, don't, don't act like that. Try to take on another way of performing, uh, like the funeral scene, you know, how I should feel and all that. So, so John is very, very much on the ball with all the emotions that's flowing on the set. And uh, he would just stand there, and then he would come over and softly tell you, where you're going wrong, and then put you back on the right track. And, and I really love that. I think John is one of the best directors I've ever worked with. <sighs> I did this film in Macau with uh, Alan Tang, Tang Guangwing, uh, and Chow yun Fat called Flaming Brothers. I didn't have that much to do with him on the dramatic level because we were sort of in different scenes. Of course, I was there when, when he had about, I think, 300 bullets exploding on his body, still waving his arms, and I said, hey, that's a long death. Uh, but the true experience of working with Joe, in fact, was in, uh, was in Hard Boil. Uh, that was when we had this 
big argument. Normally, in a scene of that nature, it's always the boss that tells the that tells the the, 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 the the subordinate off. He would scold him, and then he would more or less take out his gun and scratch put on the table. But that's the that's a cliche kind of uh, scene treatment. But in Hot Boil, it wasn't. He was barking back at me, and uh, and I was barking back at him because we were seeing our own interests from our personal angles. So he was talking from his angle, I was talking from an angle, and both were right. Who is he? We both know him. How come he didn't shoot me? I told you already to lay off this case, Yoon. Tell me who he is! A triad? Triad. I wish he were. Somehow I don't think he is a triad. If I see him, he's a dead duck. Just thought I'd tell you. Thank you. Sergeant Yoon. Get back here! And that kind of argument uh, was very, very interesting from, from an actor's experience because, because there's no right, no wrong, and that's what the story's about. There's a hundred questions you ain't gonna get answered. Like, why do cops need search warrants and thieves not? Why do cops have to write reports when they use a gun and the robbers never have to? And why are no murderers considered innocent until proven guilty? And the burden of that proof lies on us. Why don't they have to prove their innocence instead? Huh? If I knew the answer to that, I'd be the superintendent. All right? I feel a bit regretful if Chow Yun-Fat was going to be stereotyped as the Chow Yun-Fat, as the Western filmmakers would have him. In fact, his very first attire... I don't give a shit what happens to me, right? But I'll get that human pollution and burn him. And woe betide anybody who tries to stop me. Sergeant! This is where the superstar and the ordinary actor lies. He has the way, a way of making himself grow into a character in the, in the, in the movie. Uh, that's the interesting thing about Chow yun Fat. He sh I think he deserves uh, more roles, more different roles, where, where we can share his, uh, his art and, uh, and his fun. <laughs> there was this uh, music element in Hot Boiled, uh, which was never done before in any Hong Kong film. Uh, I've, been a, I've been a singer myself and a musician uh, when I was in high school. Of course, music has always been a very in, uh, integral part of filmmaking, even for me as a director and filmmaker. Uh, I'm not sure if it was my idea to put that Lana Ritchie thing in. It's probably John Woo's, although I would like to say it was my idea. Uh, in any event, when, when he mentioned it, of course, I would appreciate it. Uh, I think acting has a lot to do with the rhythm. And John knows movie very well, of course. John knows movie music very well. You got a guy called Vodka? Vodka? Tequila. A heavy duty cup. I don't give a shit what he is. Tell him to back off, will you? I don't want hassles. That man will wreck everything. You want another funeral in the department? Point taken. No one's mentioned the rooftop scene between me and Tony for years until after Inferno Affairs. And then somebody who's seen Hardball say, hey, didn't that rooftop scene, you know, came from, and, and then of course there's the latest uh, uh, Martin Scorsese movie, also the rooftops. But I think Hot Boil was the, was the first one to use the land, the city landscape. I think it was shot, it was shot on, the, uh, on the rooftop of the Excelsior Hotel. Uh, I was told that's where I was gonna meet Tony. Uh, I missed all the activities in the busy city. There are these two persons exchanging very, very personal and private secrecies. Uh, and that's the scene where I, I really enjoyed working with Tony because although it was not an emotional scene, there was a lot of uh, exchange of unspoken friendship. Just give me a day, okay? Customs are a snip. Be cool, all right? You'll get what you want. When I was looking at Tony's eyes, it's very difficult not to be influenced by Tony when you work with him, especially when there are only two persons. Uh, I really felt he was my son. And it's like seeing your son walking into fire and, and there's nothing much you can do. You can't tell him the unavoidable outcome he probably would have to face, except that you still have to try and put him under an impression of, you know, personal care and, you know, protection. 
it's, it's very intimate scene. It's a birthday. Forget. Present. <laughs> I had forgotten. So busy being a gangster. I don't know which me is real. Hey, and you're the only guy that remembered it anyhow. The experience working with him and Hot Boy is he's very silent, he's very quiet, he's very subdued. Uh, he's just one of the faces in the crowd. That's, where, that's what an undercover agent should be. You don't see that Tony, that sexy and, you know, da-da-da-da, you know, razzle-dazzle. Uh, he was good. He was good. Come in. Madam. More flowers for you. Thank you. Theresa Mo uh, didn't have, have too many uh, scenes with me in the movie. Uh, again, she's another actress who, who really adapts to her role very, very comfortably. Normally, she's a very, she's a, in the movie, her, her image, she, she normally plays the loud mouth, you know, there's sort of like a crazy woman kind of comedian. And, but in this one, he, uh, he played the woman inspector. inspector. At first, I had my doubts when I saw her in the set. But then, of course, uh, after, you, after you enter into the shooting, that doesn't bother you at all. And she's, uh, she's very settled in as the character in the movie. This is, again, I mean, good casting on John's part. What is this? Miss Ola. Are you somewhere feeling lonely? Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Tone deaf and dumb. A lot of people might wonder who this Barry Wong guy is. Not Barry White, not Barry Manilow, but Barry Wong. But for us, who, uh, who was very active in the 60s, in, no, in the 70s and the 80s in filmmaking, Barry has always the one scriptwriter that people, the good filmmakers, will, 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 will look for. And I worked with him on numerous occasions, especially on a lot of uh, Sammo Hung's uh, action comedies. On, uh, on, my, on my own action comedies uh, with DNB films and with some of Jackie's films. Uh, with with Golden Macau, we'd, we'd have a whole day meeting, then we'd play cards, then we'd go out party, then we'd come back, sleep a little bit, and work again. And Barry had this, there seems to be no limit to his creativity. So far, the police have not been able <laughs> The ending scene, the shootout in the hospital, the explosions and the fire, and Chow Yun-Fat saving the baby, climbing down the rope and all that. Uh, I was there that night, and I have to tell you, that those were the days without the, the CGs, without the computer graphics, without, the, uh, without so much modern age, uh, high-tech post-production assistance. Everything was real. And when I, went, when I went there that night, everybody was tense. But, uh, if you are familiar with Hong Kong filmmaking, there's not much, too much shouting or talking. You can't even tell who is who. There's a lot, there's, there's a lot of people because in that scene it was a major scene. It was the, it was the ending scene, and, and I couldn't even find John. Where's the director? He's somewhere. He's somewhere. He's either inside directing a shooting scene, or he's outside telling people to set up for the next. And I think they, I think they only had a couple of nights to do this. Uh, I went there for a couple of nights. I did the, the, gun, the gun shooting, the shootout scene in, inside the hospital and then outside. Uh, it was quite, it was very tense, but people were pref, very professional. And I've always wondered, how is John going to set this up? Because I hear about Chow Yun-Fat coming down and all that uh, with, with a baby. And uh, although, although I was not involved in that shot, I stayed on, I think, to see Chow Yun-Fat do that. And everybody was just exhilarated. No, you stay here. All the explosions went well. The fires came out the windows and everything, and uh, th that's why John's a big director.